Welcome back to the uh, Pat Long Co's YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating uh, graphical outputs and tables in one PDF file uh, using the Python programming language. Uh, to do this, we'll principally use it, uh, the matplotlib library uh, as well as uh, the pandas library. And uh, we'll produce an output that looks uh, similar to the uh, following output. So here's our expected output that we'll be putting uh, inside a PDF file uh, created using the matplotlib library. So let's jump into some code. So I like to use uh, Google Colab uh, and the Jupyter Notebook I'm going to be using uh, was written in Google Colab. And I'm just quickly showing you here how to access it if you're not familiar with it. I typically use it in uh, most of my Python programming videos. So you can access it through uh, your GitHub account too, uh, if it's linked. Uh, or you can start a new notebook like I do. Uh, again, the notebook that I use in this tutorial is linked in the description below. Um, and uh, it's probably best to just Follow along with that notebook or uh, watch the video and then uh, use it yourself later with uh, different code. So here we are now ready to uh, get started and I'm going to import uh, the necessary libraries to uh, use a toy data set. I'm using the Iris data set. Um, it's Fisher's Iris data set. It's fairly uh, commonly used. Um, I'm accessing it through uh, the scikit-learn library in Python, and I'm going to uh, convert it to uh, from a data set uh, to a pandas data frame. Um, so yeah, um, to do that, we use the numpy uh, concat function, um, which is. Uh, Data equals uh, np um, dot c underscore, and then uh, you essentially convert these arrays, um, which are, are commonly named uh, data and um, and uh, target, and uh, almost all the toy data sets in the uh, sklearn uh, dot data sets. Um, so yeah, once we get this, I'm going to create some summary information, uh, which is going to uh, then serve as our uh, toy data set um, that will go into, you know, creating the graphical output uh, that we plan on creating. So yeah, and this is uh, what Iris grouped uh, DF will be. This is just a data frame I'm creating. Um, using the uh, pandas group by method. And so it seems like a lot of steps just to make a toy data set, but uh, this makes it fully reproducible. Um, when you're uh, using this code, you can see where I got it from. Um, you can reproduce it in uh, your own Jupyter Notebook um, or using Google Colab like I do. Um, and yeah, then... So I'm, I, I know the names of the, um, the groupings. So I'm going to uh, make a condition list, which, you know, a list in Python. I'm going to match it with the choice list, uh, which are the three different types of... Uh, um, yeah, three different types of plant, three different species of plants, I believe. Um, again, I, I, if you Google Fisher's Iris data set, you, you'll get the uh, full lowdown on that. And um, yeah, so let's run this and look what it uh, looks like if I output it. Here, oh, and here I'm, yeah, and here I need to uh, make the target name based uh, using the mp dot 
choice function using the condition list and choice list we just made. And I'm going to make the default um, equal to unknown, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. It's just uh, if there is anything that doesn't match between those two lists, it will be unknown. And so let's run this. And so this is what our output data set is going to look like, and that's what we're going to be putting in our... Uh, in our um, output a PDF file. And so, yeah, again, I'm, I'm just making a text header here so it's easy for you to follow along. Um, I can add code, text, change the name of the uh, um, the Jupyter Notebook to something more meaningful than untitled. And uh, now I'm going to uh, jump into the code where I'm actually producing the PDF uh, file. Again, I'm principally using the matplotlib library. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I, and I'm not, in, in, a, in a previous video that I do have linked in the description below, I use the fpdf library. Um, and you can do um, a lot more customized things for a native uh, PDF output. Um, but uh, just for a graph and an accompanying table, I think it's simpler to use the matplotlib library and it's more standard. There's really good documentation on it. Here I want to mention that I'm using uh, the, uh, for the subplot, the 211. Um, so play around with that function. If you, if you, if you, look, at, if you look at the su subplot um, and uh, the 2 typically means n rows, the number of rows, um, the one means the number of columns. And by making it 211, we'll be able to fit our graph and our table in the same output PDF file. I think if we change it to 111, uh, we'd probably lose some of the table. But you, you're more than welcome to play around with that um, if you um, copy the code from the description, um, from the link in the description below. You can, you can see what the different outcomes might be. So here I'm also setting the text as a list um, so I can reference uh, different points on the x-axis. And this kind of comes into play um, also with uh, A and B where I've made uh, some lists that uh, I'm now going to use here um, as, I, as I create the bars that are part of the chart. And so this is uh, just, I'm just making use of some of uh, standard sort of, um, you know, I'm making use of the dot join um, method here to uh, create, make sure I get a return of string um, from the last uh, item in uh, each, each row of the data set each row of the data frame. And I'm also using the dot lock. Um, I'm also using dot lock to get the specific uh, row from the data, data frame. So yeah, and that's why I'm just, uh, just copied and pasted these three and I'm changing to zero, one or two. Uh, so it corresponds with the uh, table. So I'm just uh, accepting the default of the legend. And yeah, here, here I'm, uh, so 20 is my, um, uh, you know, I, my origin is zero and zero, and then I go uh, between 20 and eight. Um, so 20, 20 on the x-axis and 8 on the uh, um, y-axis based on uh, based on knowing the data set, knowing that it doesn't go above. Um, I don't I don't think there's an average above 7. So that's why I made 8. And, and you could make that a data-driven number. I just put 8 because I knew uh, what my maximum value was. 
So yeah, and here's my output. Um, uh, you know, this is what the output should look like, and let's jump into a PDF. And here's our uh, desired PDF output. Um, and so yeah, it's pretty simple. Again, using the FPDF library, we could extend that and make it a lot um, fancier. But I hope that's given you a good idea of how you can uh, build a PDF and a chart in Python. Thanks for uh, watching this video and uh, feel free to hit the like button if you enjoyed it or leave me a comment below uh, if you have any recommendations on improving it. Okay, see you in the next one. Thanks.